Hey everybody, what's up? My name is William Jimenez and I am a artist. Right now I'm penning a book called Please Die Anna. And for this video, it's just me drawing um, uh, just a random idea that I had from for a character I had back in the past. Uh, I just showed you the tools I was using, which is a Sharpie Fine tip pen. You could buy them at a Rite Aid or a Dwayne Reed. I was also showing you a regular Sharpie and a big marker by Bic. So those are the tools I'd be using. Also an, an eraser that I use for animation, but I didn't use it in this, so just, I guess, disregard that. Right now I'm just showing you uh, me drawing, basically. Uh, the blue lead you see on the paper is a non-repro uh, lead. I don't really know who makes it. I've had it for a long time. So uh, I I lay out mostly everything um, on paper if I can. I do my layouts. I do my sketches and stuff like that, either in pen or uh, 0 0.03 lead. Uh, or the non repro lead. So right now I'm just basically just tracing the lines and trying to make things look right to my eye at least. It's a little hard because I'm wearing like a helmet cam so it's a little weird for me to look at the paper and try to make sure my head's tilted the right way so I could actually capture it on video. Which it worked for a while but towards the end uh, my computer just froze. I must have knocked it or something, or did something to uh, the USB, which made the camera go funny and freeze up my computer. So, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Just, this is me inking. Um, I usually use uh, regular dip pens and other uh, nib sizes and stuff, but I stopped doing a lot of paper and pen drawing and I started going digital like a couple of years ago so um, I was constantly using this program called Manga Studio Debut 03 which I have on my old Power Mac. I had 04 on my MacBook Pro but that passed away and uh, I never really used for just didn't seem to be something that was like worth it. So this is me just uh so that's where I, I came from. Uh doing the digital drawing a lot and I did my couple column books that way. But then I kinda also got into the habit recently of drawing uh all my sketches and my layouts on paper and small either thumbs or half page drawings for a full page uh, output for comic books so I got used to doing that again and just for future sake I think it's it's a nice thing to have on paper so in case you ever want to like display it somewhere or you want to sell your drawings down the line you have it on paper and digital the best you could do is get a print of it and I don't know, for me, it's like I wouldn't just want to buy a print of an artist if that's the case. I'd like to buy the original. And if the original is on a digital file, you really can sell that to uh, somebody. I guess at least not now. We haven't figured out a way to do it properly. If there's ever a way to reproduce something that's just like street digital onto something that's a medium you can touch like paper. So that's what I got into now. Um, the book I'm using is an old book. It's, I think, maybe uh, 11 by 13 or 11 by 14, something. It's not exactly comic book standard size, which is 11 by 17, but it's some book that I had for a really long time and I put it away in my closet and I recently just dug it out just for shits and giggles. 
and now it's something I've been using and it's almost finished and I guess after that I'll start drawing on regular um, comic book pages which is a, a two-ply type of page weight um, yeah I'm, right now I'm just drawing in hairlines everything on this thing is just random and stream of consciousness I really don't have a plan of what I'm doing when I'm drawing I'm just, just lots of it's just like free form and comes from ideas that pop in my head I'm right there you see me I'm sitting up the camera and uh, it's just me just keep inking um, this character I'm inking right now his name is uh, Thomas Slick and Thomas Slick is based, supposed to be some sort of uh, assassin but as his cover he's also uh, a TV show host for a children's show like a Mr. Rogers Neighborhood type of show and you know every so often he gets called up and he has to go and assassinate somebody and then come back to his show which is like the duality of you know life I guess we're all wearing some sort of mask sometimes uh, not so much about the art itself I mean his face isn't all self-symmetrical but it's just something that I did at like three o'clock in the morning watching I don't know like Family Guy on Cartoon Network or something and when I get an idea I just need to get it down on paper because if you don't it's just going to slip away or it's going to get distorted or it's going to become something that's not what the original idea was so I think it's best to always have some sort of paper and pencil by your side and Right now I'm cross-hatching uh, a shadow, I guess. Later on I filled that in with a straight black because it wasn't, cross-hatching wasn't fitting with the, the deep black splotches I was using. So I had to basically just get rid of it. For the character, I thought it was interesting that he was wearing a watch. I don't know why I I don't wear a watch. I don't really know many people who are women that, that don't wear watches. That do wear watches, I'm sorry. So, I guess business people still wear watches, but, you know, that's what a cell phone is for. Uh, right now as you see me, he's just, I'm just drawing in Mr. Slick's hand. He's holding a gun and uh, I don't really know how to draw guns very well. I'm not a big gun collector so I don't have any at hand. And you'll see later on in the video what I end up doing for reference and I get to that when the time comes. Okay, so moving on. Um, right now I am 
doing the inking for the character uh, Doth Clown. Um, the history of the character Doth Clown is it was a, a clown who only children could see at first. And the clown would basically help them get rid of their abuser. Uh, so it was he was basically like I don't know a kid's superhero slash uh, like Freddy Krueger almost. So he would terrorize the the abuser and ultimately end up murdering them. And that's how the original story was. Um, my revamp story for the character is uh, she's a girl and her name is Jewelry. So she's, you know, Jewelry the Clown. And I think the premise of murdering the bad people are still there. But now she's a girl and she's young and she herself has been uh, traumatized. So I kind of have a an open, like, story, an ongoing story of what exactly she is, and is she real, is she not real, is she uh, a monster, is she just a kid, is she, uh, you know, is she crazy, is she not even here, is it just like something the kids see, and they use that as a, a tool to, to, you know, to fix their own problems. But the storyline is really open right now, and I just conceived it while I was actually drawing, because I've always liked the character for some stupid reason, I don't know, it's kind of a plain character, but now uh, I guess it's a little updated. So, I don't think I'm actually going to keep Clown looking like a clown all the time with a big old target on the top of her head, but... I don't know, maybe uh, she'll evolve into something different, or she would just be a regular girl that slaps on a mask and goes around killing people. I don't know yet. So, for the storyline, uh, I've always, like I said, wanted to do the story. I tried it one time when I was younger, but at that time, uh, stuff like self-publishing comic books it wasn't something that was available to people, and if it was, it was at like thousands of dollars, and you had to get thousands of prints for the comic book. So I really wasn't interested in doing something like that, not having a market for independent comics out there uh, before the day of the internet. So. Now, since I, uh, I've been around a block a little bit more, and I've done some comic books, and some issues at least, and I know the market a little better, and I know what's available for me as a self-publisher, or my options to find a distribution deal, or seek out other companies that can help me get my book out into stores and stuff. So, you know, it's a, I think it's a cute idea, it's, it would be ultra ultra violent, I would think, in the end. Um, I don't think I want to make it something like a, a grim or a supernatural type of uh, comic book. But just make it more just down and dirty and, you know, have its funny parts with the two leading characters. But beyond that, uh, I don't know. It's still... So green and new. And this is actually the first piece actually done with the characters, and just wanted to see how everything looks together, and basically just have fun with it. I mean, if you're not having fun, if you're drawing, and I don't know, I think you should just stop drawing and maybe come back when you feel that the fun is back, and the entertainment part for yourself at least is, you know is there, it's not like a job, it's something you're, you're being entertained while hopefully entertaining somebody when they see it. Uh, there's nothing philosophical about 
uh, clown holding a dog. I just think that, you know, people who like dogs, and younger people, uh, I don't know, they seem to find animals more fascinating than adults do, with the exceptional few. Um, I don't know, there's something just innocent about holding a dog and also holding a, a AK-47 in the other hand. Which you'll see me doing later. So, she also has this grin in her face because uh, I don't know if you could see it, but in the background, there's a severed female head hanging from chains, and there's a motorcycle on a car that's blown up behind her, which you'll see in the final piece. Right now, I guess I'm getting to uh, the strap of the AK-47, and I personally I don't know how to draw an AK-47. I know what they look like in video games like GTA 4 or uh, Modern Warfare, Call of Duty type of games, but I don't know how they actually look. Look, and even the gun that I drew her holding, I don't know if it's an AK-47, but it looks like it's within that that type of body frame that I like. So, um, uh, you gun enthusiasts could tell me what it might be. I don't know. Some stuff I'm, I draw is off screen, and I'm sorry for that. It's the helmet cam I was wearing. I couldn't really tell where I was looking. Uh, since it's sitting on the top of my head, I couldn't really look at the screen and see what it is actually capturing at the same time. So um, I apologize for that. Um, I'm also, right now, I'm drawing the, the character of Cadillac. And Cadillac is a little girl. She's a runaway, and she's, uh... I guess she's also been victimized, so that's why she's a runaway. She couldn't, you know, deal with what she was living with, and she came across uh, jewelry. And they became uh, not so much friends, but just two people who share a similar past. And I guess when you meet people like that, you kind of, sometimes you latch on to them, and uh, they understand what you're going through or where you've been. So you could both, like, I don't know, help each other find some sort of camaraderie or something in common, at least. And it brings, you know, strangers closer together. Uh, I don't really know why I made her so young, I guess. It's just um, watching anime, stuff like Gunsmith Cats or uh, Riding Bean. Uh... They've always had uh, young female characters in anime and in manga who carry guns, like in a Gunslinger Girl or Kite. Um, I just thought it was, I don't know, she was cute, basically. But, you know, she's standing there making faces and blowing bubbles with her bubble gum and behind her is this big old explosion and fire and stuff blowing up and motorcycle crashing and there's a girl in a clown makeup and a white suit holding an AK-47 and a puppy dog. So it's like, how much more bizarre can you get? I don't know. And then behind her, there's a severed woman's head on chains. And... She has a horrific face. Uh, yeah, she's been horror struck. Um, the kid, you know, Cadillac, she's just, uh, I don't know, she's not 
uh, comic relief or anything. I don't think there is a comic relief. But she's, you know, a foul mouth little girl and she's a street kid. Uh, she's reminiscent to me is of, I don't know, kids that I grew up with living in New York City, uh, living in the ghetto, or going to school in the city. You run into a lot of street people and, you know, gutter punks and squatters and just people who are in the same type of music you're into. But, you know, your, my, your life might have gone a different route. Um, you know, they still want to be, you know, a snotty little punk or, you know, run the streets and say, you know, F the world and F society and blah, blah, blah. So I think she's one of those kids. You know, she's a kid. She doesn't, she doesn't really understand life. She just wants to have fun and basically be left alone, which isn't always a good thing. I think kids need parents, but it's a comic book, you know. You could break rules and you could do things outside of the norm in comic books. And censorship of it would just ruin everything, so. That's where Cadillac comes into play. Uh, I think something that was. What I was thinking about the character Cadillac was kind of disturbing was her name. And I didn't know what to call the character at first. And. Uh, the thought of someone telling somebody else that I named you Cadillac because I'm going to ride you is <laughs> kind of fucked, you know? Yeah, so that's what Cadillac is. Um, I don't know, this uh, what you see on screen is still me just inking with the fine tip Sharpie. And uh, um, I sometimes I really don't give the, the lines of the character weight, meaning I don't change the thickness of the lines. Especially if I'm doing something that's anime or manga looking. I try to keep the lines uh it's pretty pretty thin and flat almost i usually uh would use something like uh, tones what what they do in manga which are uh screen tones which are shades of gray or some sort of pattern to signify the clothing pattern or the hair or the skin tone, but this time I decided not to do that and just go turn it into Photoshop and just start coloring it after I added the shading on it, which you won't see the the big black patterns of the shading because my computer kind of it crashed when I was recording. So I have uh, I have an old Power Mac G5 that I was doing this on, so I, like I said earlier, I must have pulled plug or something and made my computer freeze and I just got tired and needed to get through the work rather than keep showing you me um, thinking basically. I don't know how much fun it is for people who aren't into comic books or into drawing or sequential art who actually enjoys watching other people draw. So if you aren't, then I really don't know what to tell you. Um, most of this video is still just me just drawing with the Sharpie Fine tip pen. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, you can find these pens anywhere in a, like a Dwayne Reed or a Rite Aid. I found mine in a, in a Dwayne Reed. And they come in two packs, I believe. Like packs of two. Uh, they're fairly cheap, at least for how uh, pens go, but I seem to like it. They don't smear, which is a good thing. Um, right now, I'm inking the dead girl's head in the background, who's hanging on hooks and chains. Uh, 
I was inspired by Joe Quesada because I saw a picture of him doing a Spider-Man cover and it was super awesome so I, I decided to rip off uh, the way his webs look which I couldn't do it at least not this this size of inking so my web ended up being just a bunch of screwballs and you know a bunch of those random lines but Joe Quesada since he's like a master I, every little piece of uh, Spider-Man's web was drawn intricately and I'm just jealous and still not at that level of course so I don't I don't really know what else to tell you about this I think there's a level of uh, horror that will be in this book if I ever get to actually create it. Uh, I'm a big horror fan. Of course, I love zombies and uh, vampire slayer movies. Uh, things that blow up and guns and women and, uh, you know, I'm not so much into obscure enough. And a, and gross stuff like Sergeant uh, Sargentio, who is an Italian old school artist uh, filmmaker. Uh, I'm not into that type of stuff. Him and George A. Romero did uh, the movie Zombie back in the 80s. It was very very shitty. So, <laughs> but. Since I, I'm into filmmaking and touring comic books and music, I just I gravitate towards anything. I could you, you'll catch me watching almost anything, from cartoons to anime to documentaries about comic books or music or filmmaking. Uh, as a kid, I was a big trauma fan. Who uh, I think Lloyd Kaufman is just. Uh, as a kid, I thought he was like a genius because he wasn't making like Hollywood movies that were just like big fluff, like the Friday the Thirteenth movies. He was more doing like the Toxic Avenger or like uh, Trauma High, which were very adult. And I was watching these things as a kid, but man, they were. They're really good as a kid, at, at least. These days, uh, not so much, but his movie Poultry Guys was pretty good. If it wasn't for the singing, but that's Lloyd Kaufman. You can't, you can't stop what he does, because he's well, who he is. And I wouldn't want to change him. <laughs> So, I'm still working on this right now. I think it took a good couple of minutes for me to do. Uh, ruler is always handy. And I don't know if you got to see, but I keep my tools, meaning my pens and my erasers and rulers, in a, a giant plastic baggie just so I could know where everything is at if I'm not sitting at my desk or in my studio. I carry around the baggie full of pens and rulers and stuff, just like a little kid. So, for me, paper versus uh, digital drawing or animation. I think they both have their pros and cons. For me, I think paper is still something that's still alive. So when you're drawing or animating on paper, you still have that 
that connection with it, with it, you know, that physical connection. You could still flip through it. You could look at it from different angles. You could, you know, feel the lines that you were drawing. They have weight. They have like a heartbeat, and for me, I think that's important. Something that's organic, and that was living once, and then. After you're finished with that, you could take it into a digital realm by scanning, and you know you could make things even at a higher quality after it comes straight from your hand and not off of a tablet. So I'm not against digital drawing or animation, but. For me, like I was saying earlier as well, is drawing on paper gives me as an artist a chance to be able to market my animation cells and, and drawings if I ever wanted to go off and sell these to collectors or donate them to, I don't know, a museum, if I, if I could be so obnoxious. And, you know, there's something there that's not uh, printed. It's not something that's, that's dead almost. It's just a computer printer that put ink on a paper and there's no weight on the paper itself. There's no, you know, pressing of the pen or pencil up against the paper, creating, you know, dents and... The life is, isn't there if it's printed on something. Uh, I would also like to thank... Uh, there's this YouTube um, school, I believe they're from the Philippines or something. They're called FZD Studios, I believe. It's uh, this... This instructor he used to work for, I think he used to work for ILM and George Lucas or something like that. And him and his crew sometimes, they make videos, instructional videos for artists. And they've actually helped me a lot. Like, I didn't know anything about painting in Photoshop until I started watching their videos and I understood more how to do backgrounds and uh, stuff like that because prior Photoshop wasn't something I would actually touch. I would just use Photoshop for lettering. But because of them, I started using it for coloring. And I just want to give them a shout out. So check out their videos. I personally don't know them, but they've been a big help for me as an artist, as a, a noob or you know an up-and-comer. So if you're like me, I think you should check them out and, you know, give them some nice words and say thank you to them. So if you check in the information about this video, I'll post the finished product, which is a full, complete uh, Photoshop colored and titled image of what I was drawing in my book. I'm sorry, I'm speaking so slow. I've been sick recently, so I'm just kind of groggy right now. It's like 2.45 in the morning, and I'm just trying to get this video done. I'm sorry, eventually it gets cut off. Again, I apologize because, um, like I said earlier, again, <laughs> my computer ended up freezing on me because I must have, I did something that caused it to stop working and. I got frustrated and I started running out of time to do things, so I had to finish up the line drawing and the shading for the 
picture and had to scan it and do a stitch on it, meaning I had to take two different scans and make it into one uh, full page drawing, which I believe in Photoshop it's called Photo Merge underneath your automatic settings and like underneath file or something like that. Uh, right now what you're seeing is I'm using reference objects and these objects the guns and actually the guns are from old G.I. Joe's from the 80's that I had ever since a kid and I've been toting them around everywhere I move so they're a great reference and I just started using them because I saw somebody from I think it was Jim Lee's camp I think he worked for Wildstorm or some artist who was using a, a toy to draw some guns and I don't really know how to draw guns very well so I broke out my old G.I. Joe uh, guns and started looking through all the stuff I had and trying to find, find something that looked like something I wanted to draw. So I don't think they're an AK-47, but they give me at least uh, the look I wanted for the gun that Clown is holding. Well, the machine gun. And that motorcycle will eventually appear behind the machine gun. Uh, it'll be doing a stoppy in the back without somebody on it, but the bike will be skidding and blowing up at the same time. And that bike was originally from, I believe, this character called Chopper from the show uh, Bionic 6. Or... It could be from Mask. I don't remember. It's been a very long time. But I had it in my 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 old G.I. Joe toy bag, so it was one of the accessories and I think uh it was just a reference that I didn't even know I had but I actually was using in my photo in my drawing and I needed a bike and lo and behold I had a, a reference. Since I don't buy toys anymore, and it's, it's the best I could do. And if I would get a picture like offline, I wouldn't know exactly how it would actually look in a three dimensional space. So the angle I would be drawing at would just be like guesswork. So I'm sorry that some of the stuff got cut off. Like I said, the camera was on my hat, so I I couldn't really tell like where I was pointing the camera because. I couldn't look down and also look at the monitor to see where exactly it was recording, so I apologize for things that got cut off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and if you watched the video this far, um, I guess I would like to thank you because I just do this stuff because as a kid I've always wondered how things were drawn and how things were inked and all that good stuff, so as I as I got older, I decided that maybe there's somebody out there who also wants to watch people draw and just see, like, where their pen goes or how they start inking one character and then go to another and then they go back to that first character or go to somewhere else. And your pen is, for me at least, is always moving around the page. It's never inking one thing and then doing it full and then shading it, and then going to somewhere else and finishing the rest of the page. I like to just move around, so once I get like complacent and bored with what I'm doing, I move to a different part, so I can still keep that that inspiration that originally I used to draw the image. I can still keep that going. So... And if you see uh, in the close-up in the video, if the lines are pixelated or jagged, they're not like that in a real drawing. It's just because I guess my camera sucks and I'm using like really old equipment to do all this stuff with, so that's why it looks so jagged and stuff, but the lines are actually pretty smooth and tight, at least 
from what I can tell. Yeah, like this part, I'm sorry that everything got cut off, but I guess I was, I guess I was out of either uh, patience or I just, I stopped being aware that there was a camera on my head pointing at, down at the paper while I was actually drawing, which is a fairly difficult thing to do because being aware and then trying to draw at the same time and trying to make that good is kind of diverges, it diverges your attention to exactly what's going on in front of your eyes. And I guess I just stopped being aware of what was happening. I'm sorry. So once again, if you want to see what this picture came out to look like after I finished photoshopping everything, you can go to the link that's below, which I'm not too sure yet where I'll post it. Maybe you can visit my uh, character's Twitter page from Please Diana. Maybe she, that account, will have the drawing link. Or if not, I'll just uh, upload it to my server and you can check out like the version there. Once again, when I draw, I usually it's all just dream of consciousness. I don't I don't copy or I don't steal people's layouts. I'm not really inspired by other people's layouts, even though I'm a huge fan of lots of sequential art and artists. Um, I'm into like old school people like Phil Jimenez and Jim Lee and uh, Kubert and Kirby and Adams. So it's that's the type of stuff that I grew up on, McFarlane and Liefeld. And Quesada. So, you know, people who work for the big two, that's the type of stuff I'm into. And I don't really buy much manga, but I do watch a lot of anime, so that inspires me a lot. And since I, I do some 2D animation, I guess my, uh, my drawing, you know, style also comes from that stuff, which is anime-inspired. So, once again, when you do stuff like guns and, like, cars and motorcycles and stuff like that, it's it's good to have a reference, unless you're creating your own vehicles and stuff and weaponry. If you want something that's relatively based on the world that you live in, the real world, you might want to use some references that's three-dimensional, something you could hold and turn and look from every angle to see exactly the way that that angle would look on paper. Whatever your character is doing or whatever, wherever that weapon or vehicle may be in. And so the last, uh, I don't know, couple of minutes of this will be me drawing a handgun, which, once again, I use reference um, from a G.I. Joe toy. And these weapons, I, I don't know where you can find them these days. I've had these weapons for a good, I don't know, 20 something years. And they've just been sitting inside of a bag. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as, as I grew older, I realized I had this collection of these miniature figures and their weapons. So I guess everything comes in handy in time.
So right now, I'm going to get into uh, join the handgun. I guess as they pull back, you can see a little bit more of the AK-47 looking type of gun. Or the heavy machine gun, whatever exactly it is. Uh, once again, I don't know what this type of handgun is either, but I know it's from an old G.I. Joe that I had. I don't know names of these guns. I don't know where you can find these little weapons from the old G.I. Joe figures in case you ask. I would just suggest you go into like eBay and find some old G.I. Joes and look at the photos that they have so you can tell what type of weaponry it's going to come with. But they do make great reference figures because you can hold them like up close and you can see the detail. And as far as coloring, they're usually just like a solid color, like a, a dark gray or black or white or blue or an orange. But for colors, you could always pick a, a gunmetal color, like gunmetal gray color or a matte black or something like that. It'll make it look like a Glock or something or silver. I don't know. Just, uh, whatever you do in your art, just be free. Try not to censor yourself too much, if at all. But still, try not to insult people. Because without an audience, all you're doing is for fun and practice. Which is not a bad thing, but you want to become like a, seri a serious comic book artist. And you want people to actually enjoy your stuff. You don't want to insult anybody. And you don't want to be, uh sexist or racist or uh, genophobe or anything like that because you know, you're killing a lot of your audience and if that's how you are in real life just curb that shit and grow up and <laughs> you know, so keep drawing uh, I'm gonna keep drawing and hopefully one day you'll see my books on racks or somewhere that's hopefully not digital because I love print and that's it I guess uh, I'll be signing off my name is William Jimenez I am an aspiring comic book artist and sequential art artist which in short is almost the same thing so Look out for my posters, look out for my comic books, go to pleasediana.com, check that out, and I'll try to put up more YouTube pages, sorry, more YouTube videos as I create uh, videos from. So, take care, thanks for watching, uh, that's it, take care, <laughs> have a good night, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, bye.